Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Saturday night. Well, we have a little bit of time on our hands. That'll be fun for us to do a video game review for the video game section of the Noel Comics YouTube channel. It is the one and only Metal Slater Glory right here for the Famicom. I'm actually playing this on a uh, NES uh, cartridge on my top-loading NES, uh, which uh, looks just like a Famicom top loader. So what is Metal Slater Glory? Metal Slater Glory is a visual novel for the Famicom that came out in 1991. It is a, it's a good one. It's uh, got uh, wonderful characters, uh, beautiful artwork, and an engaging story with some nice music as well. So without further ado, why don't we get down to reviewing uh, Metal Slater Glory on the uh, Famicom. You are a 17-year-old guy named Tadashi. You have a friend named Alina and a little sister. Uh, and you uh, find a, uh, a giant mech called a Slater. And uh, your sister is uh, Azusa. And uh, this, uh, there's a whole lot I can tell you about this game. I don't want to get into like too many spoilers. The fact of the matter is, too, is this game came out in 1991. So, I will tell you, though, that the uh, English translation of this game didn't come out until like 2018. Uh, anywho, uh, you find a mech uh, that you think is just uh, you know, a mech for, you know, just doing some work, chores, service industry type stuff in the year 2061 um but in fact it ends up having a message on it uh, that comes on the computer it says uh earth is in danger seek the creator so that then leads you on a uh you know a, a detective based sci-fi visual novel to find out what the hell is going on with this mysterious mech suit uh which uh, actually turns out to be uh, the legendary uh, weapon known as Metal Slater Glory. Uh, and you are, uh, you know, destined, for various reasons, to pilot this mech. And uh, Azusa, your sister here, uh, is super, super important to the plot as well. Um, so this right here is a really great example of you know, what Metal uh, Slater Glory, I always say, say, want to say Metal Gear, because uh, that's another great 8-bit uh, mech series that went on to greatness. Uh, Metal Slater, uh, right here, you know, you can see this is basically what you'll do, is you'll just kind of look at these beautiful pictures, uh, beautiful animation here, and, you know, you'll just talk to people, look at things. At a certain point, the game will get into some uh, kind of a point and click uh, type stuff. Um, and then there is also a little bit of dungeon crawling as well. This game's got some range, and it is a very, very ambitious title. Uh, and this game, fun fact, ended up being re-released for the Super Famicom in the year 2000. Because there was actually going to be a Nintendo 64 uh, disc drive game, uh, Metal, G Metal Slater Glory 2. Uh, but because the Nintendo disc drive for the Nintendo 64 uh, went belly up, um, you know, didn't come to fruition. So they basically had a uh, Metal Slater Glory director's cut. Um, the artist, Yoshimiru, is really interesting. His art style changed uh, quite a bit between this game and Metal Slater Glory Director's Cut. So if you see the original artwork for Metal Slater Glory, it looks like this. But if you see the artwork for Metal Slater Glory Director's Cut, the official artwork, that looks very different. I mean, you can tell it's the same artist, but he adopts an entirely new art style um, so, you know, this game starts out very tranquil, as most role-playing adventure games do. Um, so, you know, you talk to different people, you turn around, that kind of thing. But, as the game progresses, you end up getting into all kinds of wacky adventures. Uh, so actually, why don't we check those out? Um, 
like a Yoshimir included an actual manga with the instruction manual because he wrote this gigantic script for this game and uh, based on interviews he's given and other reviews uh, of, that, of this game that I've seen on YouTube, um, you know, like uh, over 50% of the script was had to be cut. Um, so he did uh, kind of include a manga uh, with the instruction manual to uh, kind of, you know, uh, add some context. But the game's climax here. So uh, you're going to go into all kinds of crazy places, uh, restaurants, burger joints, uh, space stations, uh, abandoned space stations, <laughs> um, places uh, rife with alien corpses, um, you know, uh, your ship, all kinds of crazy stuff. These are all places that you will go when you play. Metal Slater Glory as, uh, you know, the uh, mystery of your mech unfolds and the mystery of your parents uh, unfold. Uh, you know, again, uh, four hours. This is a nice length for a video game. It's got a rich story, uh, but it's also very straightforward. Like a game you can just kind of sit down and play. Uh, while getting treated to a nice story. It's very um, uh, linear. There's not a lot of room for confusion. Toward the end of the game, when you have to do a little bit of dungeon crawling, uh, a, uh, you know, a, a strategy guide might not be the worst idea to have on hand. But again, uh, the game will pretty well prompt you to do what you have to do. Uh, so this is not a very difficult game. But, uh, yeah, you can't, I, I don't, I, I, I can't even, like, describe, you're gonna get some animations here that you're just, you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, like, there's no way that the Famicom is pulling this off, but sure enough, uh, it is, uh, and it's, uh, it's amazing. That was really, really, oh, well, they got him, alright, good deal. Alright, direct it. We're headed to uh, Colony 3, and here's a picture of uh, how the uh, game looks here. Uh, this is a cockpit scene, we're flying through space, and uh, you have some text that you go through here. You know, another nice thing that this game likes to do is uh, draw very beautiful pictures, and then do things like add, you know, like blinking eyes, and then... You know, from that still quality picture, really build up, um, you know, just by you know, having that picture there, but then like move hands, move, uh, you know, eyes, move, move your mouth, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, you can really uh, evoke a lot of different emotion by having these really pretty pictures. And with minimal animation, they're still able to, you know, uh, stoke a lot of interest because they're visually interesting to look at and they're likably written. Metal Slater Glory. This is, in my opinion, the most beautiful 8-bit video game ever made. It's probably the best game on the Famicom, um, if you like role-playing games and visual novels, um, with its uh, great story, beautiful artwork, and uh, smooth gameplay. It's smooth in the sense that uh, you don't really get lost. You can just kind of sit there, think, and enjoy the story. Uh, and until next time, guys, my name's Noel. You take care, and I will see you in the very near future. Bye-bye.